Price, a terror suspect, walks free on bail. His lawyer says the case against him is non-existent. A man dies after a police chase at Tweed Heads on the Funnel Coast. Miraculous escape, a plane overshoots a runway with passengers scrambling to safety. And grand final fever takes hold of both Sydney and Melbourne. This is NBN News with Natasha Baysdorf and Paul Lobb. Good evening. He's accused of serious terror offences, but tonight a student from the University of New South Wales is expected to walk out of jail. The 25-year-old allegedly wrote a hit list of names and places, but an expert's evidence has cast doubt on the police claims. Accused of plotting to kill Australian politicians and target Sydney landmarks, Mohammed Nizamdeen has been locked in a maximum security prison for four weeks. But today, a magistrate gave him bail after the sole piece of evidence against him was heavily criticised. He was granted bail because the case against him is extremely weak, almost non-existent. We'll be continuing to fight until all charges are dropped and he's completely exonerated. The police case against the star student hinges on a notebook found at the University of New South Wales. Program for those who are actually willing to get a hands-on experience in the real world. But a handwriting expert who compared the hit list to a sample of Mr Nizamdeen's writing couldn't conclude they were by the same person. You've got an expert saying that it's not his handwriting at this stage, so there's no handwriting match on the notes at all. So is it your argument that the police have the wrong person? The court heard that not only has Mohammed Nizamdeen told police that the hit list wasn't written by him, but detectives have also failed to find any extremist ideology material on devices which belong to the young man. Police say he was acting alone, but is an alleged affiliate of Islamic State. Week, hundreds of people gathered in Mohammed Nizam Dean's hometown in Sri Lanka to protest his arrest. The student has been released under strict conditions. He has to report to a local police station twice a week, can't get a passport, can't go within 500 metres of an international point of departure, and can't contact any of his former colleagues. How is he doing in prison? I'll we'll ask him, I think, once he comes out, yeah. This is the aftermath of a crash which killed a 22-year-old man following a police chase in Tweed Heads. Police say they tried to pursue a speeding Mazda, but stopped not long after. The man's car was later found crashed into a tree. A critical incident investigation has been launched. A day of shame is how the banks themselves have described the first report out of the Banking Royal Commission. It's scathing of a culture of greed within the financial sector with the pursuit of profit over honesty. It was the inquiry the government didn't want. It's reckless distraction. The Royal Commission has lifted the lid on breathtaking misconduct. Charging premiums for life insurance to someone who's dead. A world of finance where profits come first and customers are fleeced. An investment property to rent to someone else when we haven't even got a property to live in ourselves. Sorry. In 59 days of public hearings led by former High Court Judge Kenneth Hayne, there's been high drama. The mighty have fallen and the already tarnished reputation of financial institutions has been battered. Some of these events may have involved breaches of the law. Today, the Commissioner hand-delivered his three-volume interim report to the Governor-General. He asks a key question. Why did it happen? Too often, the answer seems to be greed, the pursuit of short-term profit at the expense of basic standards of honesty, products and services multiplied. Banks search for their share of the customer's wallet. From the executive suite to the front line, staff were measured and rewarded by reference to profits and sales. Banks and other financial institutions have put profits before people. The report also turns a blowtorch on the two financial sector regulators. When misconduct was revealed, it either went unpunished or the consequences did not meet the seriousness of what had been done. A damning account of shocking conduct in Australia's finance industry. The Commissioner says that a lot of the conduct that's being condemned is already illegal and the basic idea of a lot of very complex law is simple, that services be efficient, honest and fair.
Today is a day of shame for Australia's banks. And the road to redemption will be long. Having lost the trust of the Australian people, we must now do whatever it takes to earn that trust back. The final report is due in February. Chris Ullman, NBN News. The death penalty would not be enough. A heartbreaking message from the relatives of a murdered mother dumped in Sydney South at her toddler daughter. Today they faced killer Daniel Holdham at his sentence hearing following an 11th hour confession. The Crown calling him extremely dangerous. Those who loved Carly Pierce Stevenson and her daughter Candelise have never spoken publicly. But today through relatives, Carly's father Bruce Pierce laid bare their heartbreak. The hate that I feel is consuming. I've never hated anyone the way that I hate you, he told the Supreme Court. Addressing Daniel Holden directly, he said, I would like to see the death penalty for you, but even that would not be enough. Crown Prosecutor Mark Tedeschi called it a thrill kill. Holden sexually assaulted and most likely stomped on Ms Pierce Stevenson in Belangelo State Forest in 2008. He took photographs described as a trophy of sorts. Mr Tedeschi said Holden then killed her two-year-old daughter and dumped her body in a suitcase on the side of a South Australian highway to hide what he'd done and because he had a sexual interest in her. He then returned to his other girlfriend, Hazel Passmore. It wasn't until 2015 that Candelise was found, leading to the identification of her mother, who had been known as Angel because of the T-shirt she was found in. The Crown argued the convicted pedophile is so dangerous he should be jailed for life. Holdham did not show any emotion at any point, reading documents and resting his head on a bandaged hand. He will be sentenced in November. Kelly Fedor, NBN News. Work on Newcastle's largest infrastructure project in recent history is tonight coming to an end. Live now to reporter Sam Burberry and Sam, the light rail is almost here. Good evening, Tash. That's right. I'm currently standing on the corner of Hunter and Derby Streets where workers have begun removing the temporary fencing and orange bollards to reopen the city to traffic and pedestrians. This comes as a welcome sight to many business owners up and down Hunter Street and fulfills a promise made two weeks ago. Today was the deadline Transport Minister Andrew Constance gave a fortnight ago. This city will well and truly breathe as we see all barriers removed. Workers were busy this morning putting the finishing touches on the tramway between Derby and Pacific Streets. Their deadline fast approaching. I'm sure there's been a couple of little sleepless nights for some key individuals, but, but overall everyone's remained calm and just gone on and done their job. The milestone comes around a year after work commenced, shutting down Hunter Street, causing chaos. Even today, businesses further east were feeling the pain. I'm sure the town will benefit from it, but it's us little people that are really depending on the clientele to walk past or the traffic to come in that have been hurt and have suffered greatly. We really have. Revitalising Newcastle acknowledges the construction phase has been tough. There's lessons all the time that, that you learn in any project because every project's different. The organisation says it wants people to rediscover the CBD but encourages them to use caution when out exploring. There'll be some places where they used to turn right that they can't turn right anymore. It just encourage everyone to go a little bit slower. The barricades come down just in time for tomorrow's official opening of the revamped Newcastle station. The event gets underway at 5pm. Burberry reporting there. Major track work has commenced on the Hunter Line to repair damage from a derailed coal train. Multiple wagons left the track between Musselbrook and Singleton on Wednesday and were struck by a passing locomotive, causing rolling stock to buckle and overturn. Repairs are underway to replace around 1,500 sleepers, 100 metres of track and signalling equipment. Buses will replace trains over the long weekend. Police are warning drivers to know the consequences of breaking the road rules this October long weekend. They're out in force for Operation Bring Your A Game and will be targeting drink driving, speeding and mobile phone usage. Meanwhile, holiday traffic is banking up at many of the usual bottlenecks. A hex of vehicles were queued for kilometres. 
The small town of Dungog isn't best known for its arts and culture, but this weekend it'll be bursting at the seams. The Dungog Festival is expected to attract thousands of art lovers and will feature a different kind of exhibition with sculptures out in the elements. Into the hills of Dungog is sculpture on the farm. From the house to the tractor shed, the garden to the paddock, art is everywhere. I'm thrilled with the quality of the work. It's just so exciting. And we've got established artists whose work is known, and we've got emerging artists whose work is sensational. It was bump in day, sculptures carefully placed and curated throughout Philippa Graham's Fosterton Farm. Part of the Dungog Festival, the exhibition will run for the duration of the long weekend. Pieces just fell into place. They just sat in the landscape beautifully and we're thrilled. More than 50 sculptors will exhibit around 100 works this weekend. Six of those, like this one here, have been shown at Sydney's Sculpture by the Sea. So this is called Nothing But Sky by Brad and Snape, a Newcastle artist from the Creator Incubator. Mm -hmm. And you come through and you pop your head through and indeed you see Nothing But Sky. <laughs> So this one here is um, by Will Maguire. This is just wonderful and I can't wait to see the reflection.